This is a quick video giving you a starting point for how to use your graphics display calculator for the subtopic of matrices. So I won't go into super detail, I just want to give you a starting point to show you where the sort of the key areas in your calculator uh, are for matrices and then you can build on that from there as you do questions. So first things first, let's, let's start by just entering this two by two matrix A into our calculator. So the way that we do that, there are a few ways, but the sort of most straightforward way is to go menu, number seven, matrix and vector, number one, create, number one, matrix. And it asks you, okay, what's the order of your matrix? And uh, in a prior video, I talked about how to sort of determine the order of a matrix. And this matrix here is a two by two because it has two rows and two columns. So I won't need to change any of those settings. I'll hit OK. And there we have an empty two by two and I can enter my values in. So it's two, four, five, and three. Now, what I recommend doing is storing this matrix into your calculator. Uh, if you're going to use that later on for, for calculations, let's say you're taking the power or maybe finding the inverse, I recommend storing this. That way it's just easy to pull it out later. And it's also sometimes you need to actually pull, pull out a stored value as opposed to entering the matrix itself. So I recommend doing this. Let's go ahead and store it. So we go control store. We're gonna store our answer, which is this matrix here. And I'm gonna choose letter A. So the benefit of that is now our calculator remembers my letter A here. If I hit A and hit enter, it actually remembers that A is this matrix and it will continue to remember that until I override A with something else or potentially, uh, potentially I clear all the memory in my calculator. But until then, it will always remember my A value as the matrix A. Okay, so I have covered entering and storing. Let's, let's just do a few operations now with my um, matrix A. Let's just add A and A together. So A plus A, just as an example. Pretty simple. Let's do A take A. You can see here, this becomes a lot simpler and quicker if I've stored it. Okay, that, interestingly, that creates a zero matrix, which is kind of obvious, because so I'm taking two take two and four take four. Let's go say A times A. So matrix multiplication, that's interesting. What if I went A, say, to the power of five? I'm expecting some pretty big numbers here. There we have pretty big numbers. So you can see here operations fairly straightforward uh, in the calculator, particularly if we have stored the matrix as a letter. Okay, let's now go ahead and find the determinant of our matrix A. And the way that we do that is we go menu, number seven, matrix and vector. And you can see here, there's a few different options here involving matrices. Uh, a lot of them we don't cover in the AI course. We have um, covered create, but I'm looking at number three here, determinants. Now it asks for the determinants. Again, I can just drop in my matrix A, hit enter, and there we have it. We have just found the determinant of our A matrix. Now to find the inverse, I tend to not go into my menu. I just simply go A to the power of negative one, which is the inverse, hit enter, and there we have it. There is our inverse of matrix A. Now the final two items I wanted to cover is the how to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of matrix A. I'll actually start with the eigenvalues. Now that's not in the basic uh, matrix settings under menu. We need to go into our calculator index. So this book icon here, let's hit E to go down to where E starts and we scroll down to these two here. Let's look at the eigenvalues. So I'll hit enter. And again, this is this is where the benefits of storing our matrix as a letter because I can just drop in A here, hit enter, and there, there are the two eigenvalues of my matrix A. Let's now do the same process for the eigenvectors. So I'm gonna choose the eigenvectors here. Now this is not all that useful, and I'll show you why. Uh, in terms of the, the theory around eigenvectors, there's actually an infinite number of eigenvectors for any um, particular matrix that does have them because it just depends on how much the matrix has been scaled. Um, so this here will give a pretty sort of ugly version of one potential 
eigenvector. And you can see here, it's, it's not giving clean answers in terms of sort of your lowest digit being one. So I actually don't tend to use the eigenvector command very often here. I tend to actually go and, and, and do that by hand and have a smallest digit of one with some sort of scalar T outside it. But I mean, it is an option there. If you're stuck, you can actually, if it does ask for an eigenvector, you can do this and maybe round it to three significant figures. And that will be a decent answer. You might not get all the marks as it may um, want you to leave it in a different form, but it is an option there for you. Okay, so there's a starting point for matrices for you. Uh, I recommend entering some matrices, storing them, having a play around in the matrix section to see what else you can do. Uh, but they're the, they're the commands that I most often use. Okay, that concludes our video on uh, graphics display tips for the topic of matrices.